Here, if you're wildcard gaming, you probably assume that you are going to see this. The Chucky Milkman, damned if you do, damned if you don't. Grab a fourth player, lose point, try to win Oof. with three to grab that fourth spot. Deepai almost snipes Clyde with that Death and Decay in the starting area. If he had managed to get that, he would be in combat and deny a sap from Ashley the Rogue. Ashley is looking for Looney. If Ashley gets close to Looney and sees him, he's likely to put him into a sap, which is very dangerous as a Restoration Druid. So Looney instead is going to grab combat with a Moonfire onto the Mage Gelu, deny the sap. Now he can look to position into bear form. Ashley goes for a blind play early on, and as Rogue Mage in this current meta, you definitely need to play fast and hard. If you're not getting into the face of your opponents, finding a kill early on, they are going to be pressured and tapped on mana. Gelo with a good trade early on, but gets maledicted on the Temporal Shield. That's going to soak up some of its healing effect. Gelo gets Vortex back into the fight. Fist of Fury flying. Multiple maledicts committed here as Wildcard Gaming go all in to get that Cauterize early on. Clyde makes the trade, but it might be too late. Cauterize procs. Ice Block is forced, and Chalky Milkmen are suddenly out of all defensive options. Yep, beautifully done by Wildcard Gaming. Touch of Death got activated by Blizzo. Now an attempt here by Chalky Milkman. Combustion gets used. Blizzo, can he survive? Anti-Magic Zone will make Blizzo durable enough, and Blizzo doesn't trade off Ooh. anything. He still has the Karma Diffuse and the Fortifying Brew. As long as he doesn't throw, I think Blizzo's gonna be completely fine in this situation. Now, now double leg sweep secured onto Ashley and Galu. Do they have the damage to potentially take Galu down? Another Maledict gets used by Galu onto Blizzo. He immediately diffused Magics. Now into a full stun. Blizzo could be in some trouble, but Looney was able to secure the Iron Bark. Blizzo doesn't want to play it greedy, but if he gets the Touch of Karma off on Gelu, he's not going to be able to Ice Block that off, and Blizzo's going to be feeling quite healthy. Nice usage of that Fire Blood by Blizzo, removing the Gladiator's Maledict's absorption effect and allowing him to stay on target, but now he's quite exposed moving forward. This is still anyone's match, and we have not even barely stepped foot into the fight. Looney needs to make sure that he avoids those Hibernates. I guess he was expecting Ring of Frost to land anyway, and at least with Hibernate they can't follow up with Polymorph. May have been the way he was thinking on that initiation, but either way, Looney cannot afford to make a mistake. Blizzo is incredibly vulnerable now to the opposing team, Chalky Milkman. If Ashley can manage to keep this fight going for another minute, he'll have access to Vendetta, the most powerful cooldown from the Assassination Rogue, and that seems to be what they're trying to do as Gelu stalls Blizzo and Zipai with Polymorphs and Dragon's Breath, but finally, initiation by Blizzo. Zipai moves in to stun the healer. Clyde knows that the stun is coming and instead is just avoiding it out of line of sight. Zipai is spending a lot of time just not attacking, waiting for Clyde to come back into the fight, and I can't help but feel like that was a bit of a mistake. Looney now caught into crowd control with that quaking palm. Gelu loves playing that Panda Mage to try and set up some extra instant crowd control. Potentially the X-Factor, but he's dipping low. Not much defense remains. Temporal Shield is ticking away. He needs a few more seconds. Will he find it? Yes, he will. Pops himself back into the fight. Able to get dispelled on that Maledict, but another one flies in. Do they have a third for Gelu? The Sklyer's Maledict soaking up tons of healing. If they've got a third, they commit it. They've got Touch of Death. This is easily going to be a kill here for Wildcard Gaming. Too much damage to handle, and that's going to be it for the Chalky Milkman, but definitely showing signs of life. Good pressure on Blizzo. Yeah, and it's it, now to push in and get those Cyclones onto Looney and kind of set his team up because as a Frost Mage, it will be very difficult for Gallo to land those Polymorphs. He, in the past, he's been able to do it uh. off of the back of that Dragon's Breath, and that opener does not look great for Gallo. Gates are open. Wild Card Gaming has one game in their back pocket and already off to a great start in game number two. Yeah, Gallo taking a lot of damage early on. Clyde already committing his Innervate and his Iron Bark to keep Gallo in a healthy position here. Temporal Shield does get used, but once again, there's three Maldix. Gelu could be in some trouble. He doesn't have the Cauterize to fall back on, so he has to be very careful in these situations, but with that Temporal Shield, he will heal the full quite easily, but I feel like for the Frost Mage, although it is more durable, it's going to be really difficult for him to get out significant damage on the Blizzo in Z and Zipai in this matchup, especially with them just training him down and really limiting any sort of Frost uh, Bolts or any damage he can really cast out. Good initiation here by the Chalky Milkman, at least showing signs of life with a counter spell timing on Looney, stun locking Zipai at the same point in time, allowing themselves to pull Icebound Fortitude as well as the Anti Magic Zone. Smoke Bomb is still available. Ashley still has vanished to try and stun the Trinket, potentially do an all in on Zipai. That's basically their only option. They drop the Smoke Bomb. Where's the Trinket, Zipai? Is he not going to trade it? That's a very greedy decision, but Looney has Iron Bark activated right before that Smoke Bomb opportunity. You're not going to catch Looney off guard, but then they cycle on Z-Pi, denying its defense. They follow it up with a bash into a full polymorph. Perfect chain by the Chalky Milkman, but before dampening, Z-Pi's death strikes are so potent at healing himself back up, they're going to need a bit more damage to push him over. Any magic shield absorbs all of Gelu's damage. They don't have enough damage to push him completely over. Chalky Milkman's opportunity lost.
Yeah, and Gelu in this matchup, I'm not necessarily a big fan of his build. I feel like he could be running some different Azerite traits. He is opting to go with the Tunnel of Ice, but being trained down by Blizzo and Zipa, I think he's only managed to get off one in this game, so really not getting an effective usage out of that. Would have liked to see a bit of an Ice Lance build instead, allowing him to get out a little bit more instant damage in this matchup, but we'll have to see how it works out for him in the late game. When he blinks away like this and he can find Frostbolt, it is going to be nice, but I just feel like his cast of damage is so limited with the Windwalker Death Knight on him. I do think this is the basically the best stall tactic rogue mage composition you can run assassination restoration druid and frost mage if this doesn't work it's the antithesis of what the rogue mage priest would be which is an all-in aggressive one i want them to try it at least for one game because they were so close to killing zpi there if they had a little bit of extra damage a dark archangel potentially he did go down during that moment of time currently though wildcard gaming are initiating that multiple gladiators maledict assault gelu trying to stabilize throughout it but ashley is low health as well they could switch targets to catch him in a stun. Clyde responds appropriately, trading in that Iron Bark, also running Nourish. Quite a powerhouse heal, but a very long cast. He knows that the mage is the target, so he can get out this very long, powerful heal quite frequently. And if he manages to make them think they can go after him, which would be a good way to shut down Nourish, then the Frost Mage is left open. So it's definitely a good talent choice on Clyde's part, but still very difficult for the Chalky Milkmen so far here in game two. Yeah, Blizzo a little low. Looney managed to sneak away for a drink, and unfortunately for Clyde, he hasn't been able to actually sit down and regenerate any of his mana. Clyde throws in a Gladiator's Maledict onto Blizzo. Fire Blood Racial gets traded out, as well as that Fortifying Brew. Blizzo's trying to keep himself alive as Looney's stuck Ooh. in a full Polymorph. Touch of Karma gets traded out on onto Ashley. And all of a sudden, Chalky Milk Band, they're not looking so bad. They managed to get a lot of defensive cooldowns from Blizzo. He's going to be increasingly vulnerable. Looney Trinkets out of the blind, and they're just one setup away from potentially closing out this game. Oh, Blizzo gets Cycloned on his Touch of Death. Good denial here on the part of Chalky Milkman. They are showing signs of life. Ashley goes for a kidney shot to set up crowd control for the team. Both Gelo and Clyde are moving in, but neither was able to secure the chain. Regardless, Anti-Magic Zone was traded to respect the Icy Veins from Gelu. Now Gelu could maybe get a Polymorph as his casted spells are much faster with Icy Veins, so Looney is going to be playing as far away from Gelu. Double Stun Lock will slow down. Let's see if Gelu can sneak in a Polymorph. He's not even trying to go for it, basically just maybe overly respecting Looney's ability to dodge. Blizzo gets caught into a Stun Lock. This is a good Polymorph pressure from Gelu. He gets denied by Zipai. They go for a Smoke Bomb attempt. Ursul's Vortex to pull Blizzo in, but he saved that Flying Serpent kip Kick to escape to safety. Now Gello in trouble on the back foot. His healer Clyde almost completely tapped on mana. We have not even stepped foot to dampening. They have a couple of opportunities to take Blizzo out, but that clock is ticking. Yeah, kidney shot onto Zipai. It looks like Gelu and Ashley going to be switching targets as they haven't been able to really take Blizzo down with Touch of Karma and Fortifying Groot rotating back up. That's the problem with going after the Windwalker Monk is your defensive cooldowns rotate up so quickly. And if Looney is on point with his Iron Barks and keeping heal over time effects mm -hmm. on the Blizzo, it becomes very difficult. Ash or Gelu in a lot of trouble. Temporal Shield will de deny the kill for now, but with Clyde going out of mana, things will start snowballing out of control here for the Chalky Milk Band. Gelu, I see in the future. One Ice Block get traded out the second shortly after that, and that's really when the Chalky Milk Band will be in trouble. Double stun combo initiated by Wildcard Gimme as they look to force the first Ice Block of the game. Will Iron Bark be enough defense for Gelu? Good kiting, good peels on Ashley's part. It looks to be enough. Now counter aggression towards Zipai, although before dampening, it's just so unlikely. Zipai any magic shields the incoming maledict completely negating its effect nice anti-magic shield on zpi's part that's going to allow him to play a lot more aggressive perhaps they can even out the mana though looney is slowly being tapped on that front there's still potential they still have two ice blocks in the tank but the defense for wildcard gaming is now rotated and available as dampening has just begun blind has pulled glider's medallion from looney potential opportunity to switch targets gello has been nailing quite effective counter spells that could be an opening for the chalky milk men as they do burst down Blizzo heavily. Yeah, Blizzo does manage to use the Fire Blood Racial and it removes Maledict as well as all of the bleed effects that Ashley has available. So when Blizzo uses that as a defense against the Maledict, he's also getting an extra benefit of completely negating the Assassination Rogue damage. It's super effective and that's why he's able to tank through a lot of that damage and feel confident doing so. Clyde now completely tapped on man on 50% health, but Blizzo and Zipai are going to be keeping their attention on Gelu. It's not really wise for them to go after Clyde in this situation. They want to continue the pressure on to Gelu, really limit his damage, and just keep uh, Chalky Milkman in a chokehold. I mean, both druids are out of mana. 
This is still maybe an opportunity for the Chalky Milkmen to get a kill. They pop Vendetta. They're going for pressure, trying to push Wildcard Gaming over the edge here on game number two. Kidney shot initiation, but Clyde gets crowd control before he couldn't follow. He can't follow up now. z is not going to take enough damage to go down. Looney's Innervate up and available just in time for him to start to stabilize the team, get aggressive and push them over the edge. In the meantime, Clyde has managed to sneak out in center field. Looney, I don't oh, think knows no. where he is. Clyde got some mana back. That's definitely crucial for the Chalky Milkmen. They're playing the stall strategy very well here on Tolveron Arena, getting good setups as well. If there was going to be a game for them to take with their Rogue Mage, this would be it. Beautiful play by Clyde. Sometimes it's so obvious when you see a Restoration Druid running away looking for a restealth, but when you just hide in plain stealth, use that Shadow Meld, you can sit down for a drink, and sometimes they can lose track of you. Clyde definitely doing, pulling up huge plays there for his team, keeping them in this fight, and now things are looking great for Chalky Milkman. Looney almost completely tapped on mana. Blizzo gets the Fortifying Brood, still trying to pressure down Gelu in the situation, but with both Ice Blocks, Gelu is going to be feeling relatively healthy, especially with Clyde having some no. mana. In the meantime, Looney, he sneaks away, gets a drink. If Looney can reset his mana completely here, he's going to keep Wildcard Gaming definitely in this fight and put them potentially way ahead. Zipai really not under too much pressure in this situation. Oh, no. That's the problem. Chalky Milkman, they needed to try to pull out some defenses, but all they really got was the anti-magic shell. Now they've got a significant mana lead. They're gunning down for the healer. Clyde, is he going to crack under the pressure here at 18%? Uh -oh. Dampening. He makes the trade on the defense. Ashley's got good peels. They drop smoke bomb in desperation to try and assist Clyde, but even still, he manages to escape. Zipai now being counter-pressured. Chalky Milkman showing signs of life. Gallo sneaks into Polymorph. Critical plays on the part of Chalky Milkman. Zipai holding on by a thread here. His death Strike's much weaker. Ashley continues the chain. MVP plays that anti-magic shield's defense is going to be fading here shortly. Vendetta gets popped. It's do or die. z will you fall? They're pressuring Clyde at the same time. It's a race to the finish. Who will fall first? z gets bursted. Looney is struggling. He has to open up his school of magic if Gelo can sneak in a counter spell. He's trying to find polymorphs as well, but now he's pressured away. Temporal Shield bounces him back into the fight. Both sides begin to stabilize, but Looney's drink earlier has kept them a lead. Yep, Gelu caught into a stun. Do they have the damage? I actually don't want to see them go after Clyde unless they just want to stop the drink. That's all I want to see from Wildcard Gaming. Potentially, Looney could play a little bit more aggressive to do so. I want the pressure to be continued on Gelu in this matchup. z and Blizzard really have to focus on that as Gelu is forced into his first ice block. But with Cold Snap available, he's going to have one left in around 30 seconds. Once that Hypothermia debuff does fade, he can use the second ice block. There's a small window of opportunity here for Blizzo and z to push oh. to try to take him down. Full KD shot now on Blizzo. Looney caught into the bash. Blizzo could be in some trouble. Might have to trade out his touch of karma early. Doesn't want to fall without using it. There it is. Blizzo will trade that offensive cooldown or that defensive cooldown out onto Gelu and try to take him Beautiful. down. This could be the second ice block from Gelu. Beautiful sap from Ashley continuing the chain, but unfortunately it doesn't pull any defense. And now Gelu is still on the back foot. Clyde's innervate available, but he gets incapacitated on it. Devastation for the Chalky Milkman. But Gelu secures a counter spell. The critical play to win the game. He sneaks in inevitable. No, he gets denied. z denies him at the final second. That easily could have killed Blizzo. Gelu doing whatever he can to keep his team in the fight. It's been an uphill battle throughout, but definitely showing signs of life. This Fist of Fury is doing so much damage to two targets. Clyde has no mana. Ice Block is forced. That's going to be the final one. Ashley gets swapped to. He's basically <laughs> trying to avoid the attacks with Sprint, but even still just rotted down. Clyde is unable to heal. It's do or die, but there's no opening for them. They're just slowly rotting down. Ashley in desperation peels the whole team, but even still the pressure is mounting. Wildcard Gaming look to close. Gladiators Maledix for this final assault to take Gelu down. And with crowd control initiated, they will find victory on game number two. Oh, man. Gelu, Baba, Clyde, and Ashley just Looney setting up Gelu potentially. You see oh. Gelu actually swapped over to Fire Mage here, so wants to get a little bit more offensive in this matchup. Looney has predictably been trinketing blind every single time. So I'm wondering if Runes of Lordaeron is an attempt to punish that and make a switch to Looney and try and burst him down. If that is the case, I still would have liked to see Clyde go to the Discipline Priest, even though it is weaker overall in the current meta. I will say that it is still stronger at trying to find a kill, at least within the first 20 seconds of a game. Chalky Milkman engage on z -Pi. So I'm looking to see for Ashley's blind. When is he going to make a move? Look for that crowd control initiation. Not just yet. Instead, just trying to counter pressure. But z -Pi can easily walk that off. Greater Pyroblast, a change here for Gelu Baba. He's just getting them off for free. 
potentially could work out for him, but definitely difficult when facing down a Windwalker and a Death Knight. Yeah, you greater Power Blast, a Death Knight, and guess what? He just death strikes all of that damage back up. So unless Gelly is getting them off in a stun lock on Zipai, that damage is going to be really insignificant. Now a touch of death secured onto Gelu. They respond with the Iron Bark as well as Temporal Shield. Gelu has to hold on. The last time we saw this play out, a touch of death was enough to get the Cauterize and Ice Block, but Chalky Milkman playing it better, reacting to the situation a little bit quicker. Gelu does manage to hold on to his Ice Block for now. Good counter pressure here on a Blizzo. Looney already trinketing out a blind as well. Chalky Milkman with good aggression, but Blizzo's still feeling healthy with every single one of his defensives, and Gelu's falling further and further behind. Clyde tried to cross the map to get crowd control and got crowd controlled himself by Looney. Now Gelu is very far behind in their on match point. Now, obviously, as Rogue Mage, they are going to need to take risks, but it still matters if they're calculated. That may have been a costly exchange. Fortunately, Gelu was able to escape off the back of Ashley's defense. I uh, will say the coordination between Gelu and Ashley has been sick. This is the swap that I wanted to see, but you are not going to catch Looney off guard. A veteran restoration druid when it comes to facing rogue mage whoa greater pyroblast potentially could add a bit of extra punch for the team of chalky milkmen looney manages to duck around the corner trying to jump to safety ashley's just training him down potentially this works but it's match point and to risk an all-in on looney is a lot yeah, Gelu has to trinket out of the leg sweep. Good burst here by Blizzo. He's got Zwen as well as his images up, but a beautiful ring of frost denies that. Now oh. Gelu once again looking for a greater power blast. Finds it on Blizzo. Kidney shot bash onto Looney. Good pressure here for the Chalky Milkman. This aggression onto Looney has been paying off. Gelu fa falling a little bit behind, though. Clyde trying to deny that with the Iron Bark. But if you look at Mana, Clyde not doing so well. Looney, he has to stay alive. Still has the Iron Bark with the beautiful death grip from Zipai. Gets Looney a little bit of time. Man, that time gets denied there by Clyde with that beautiful offensive cyclone. Now, if Ashley can reconnect on the Looney, he could definitely be in a lot of trouble. Clyde is running Feral Affinity. I want to see him just go cat form right now and try and get a kill. He's going to do it, initiating with some extra damage. Gelo just needs to support a tiny bit. They may be able to push Looney over the edge. Ursula's Vortex pulls Looney back in on his escape. Greater Pyroblast gets asphyxiated. z -Pi with these clutch shutdowns right at the last second to allow Looney to easily recover in the back line. Ashley has given up on that chase towards Looney instead. Now going after z -Pi, but it might be too little too late burst is incoming touch of death is about to explode this may potentially be an ice block force not enough damage to push them over the edge gelu stabilizes they go for a blind on looney and now looney's trying to mix it up opposite to trick it anyway to remove that blind to deny clyde from drinking does he know where he is it looks like they are able to stop clyde from regenerating mana no opportunity there for the chalky milkman to stay alive and they may have to trade an ice block for no mana at the back end of that drink temporal shield and good kiting and avoidance on gelu's part manages to hold on to it for now but how much longer the only opportunities i really see here is another swap to looney but even that may not be enough he pre bear forms the shadow step stun denying ashley once again yeah, and gelu with this greater power blast build is really limited on his damage especially looking for greater power blast on looney it's just so unlikely he can actually land one that manages to be significant potentially oh counter spell uh, that was a nice counter spell on a looney still uh, under pressure but with bark and iron bark i think he's going to be able to survive Gelu, once again, these Ring of Frost are really effective against Windwalker Monk, especially when they have their Storm Earth and Fire available. That will crowd control the images, really limiting the damage that the Windwalker Monk has at his disposal during that time. Clyde, once again, I believe, looking for a drink in this situation, needs to be able to regenerate a little bit of mana. Looney caught into the kidney shot, trades out the Bark Skin. Hand time Magic Zone gets dropped out by Zipai as well. Looney not wanting to overreact in this situation. Wildcard Gaming always very clinical with the way they rotate their defensive cooldowns. It's very rare we see them overlap or mess up and that's what makes it that's one of the things that makes them such a strong team i'm really wondering if wildcard gaming are ever going to pressure clyde with that feral affinity perhaps they are worried about leaving the greater pyroblast mage open and that's probably why gelo is running it is so that if they try and rush down the feral affinity they're going to die to greater pyros and if they can't run down the feral affinity then clyde just gets to benefit from its effects i think that is some good coordination on the part of chalky milkman to try and mix things up here against wildcard gaming as they battle against the meta but now they're totally tapped on mana touch of death is available for blizzard and at any point that is going to deal devastating damage we see a gladius maledict assault it gets stalled out for a couple of seconds at least breaking up the combo and that may now allow gelo to recover double maledict temporal shield heals big 
Good stall there by Chalky Milkman. They stay alive a tad bit longer, but they're on match point, and I still don't see any openings for them. Clyde with absolutely no mana left. Once again, looking for a drink, but he's left Gelua behind. Ice block gets traded out, not overlapped with the Cauterize. That is the only thing that will keep Gelu alive during this next push of wildcard gaming. Clyde has to hold on a little bit longer, looking for crowd control on Looney, but now Gelu caught into the stun. Is there going to be enough damage to take him down and force out that Cauterize? Seepai still being pressured, but he's able to easily heal through that with the death strikes. The pressure from Chalky Milkman in this matchup has been so insignificant. Unfortunately, now Gelu falling further and further behind. Incapacitate onto Clyde. Gelu getting lower. Temporal Shield gets traded out before the potential Cauterize. That might be enough to keep him alive during these moments. He's going to be rushing away, trying to stay alive, trying to kite Clyde with the Iron Bark. But now, no Iron Bark, no Temporal Shield, no Cauterize, no Ice Walk. Wildcard Gaming is one clean setup away from potentially closing out this game. If they don't kill Zipai in the next kidney shot, I don't think that they're ever going to kill him. But they're not even stabilizing for an opportunity to do it. They've got the Combustion, they've got the Vendetta, but Zipai can just trade with Trinket Anti Magic Zone. So unless he's stunned on his Trinket, which isn't available, no Vanish for Ashley. They just used the kidney shot on Looney to try and go after him, but there's not enough gas in the tank for a road trip down to Restoration Druidville. Now Geller's getting counter-pressured. Not much left for him. Blinks to center field. Good evasive maneuver so far, but just not enough to really get any sort of counter pressure. Temporal Shield seconds away from bouncing Gelu back into the fight. Vendetta now ready and available. They've got to do something soon. They're going to pull the trigger on it, trying to take Z-Pi down. They play it out patiently and don't overlap cooldowns. This way they can get a two-for-one on this Iron Bark, potentially. Gelu's still trying to sneak in a greater Pyro Blast. That may be his opportunity to find a kill against Wild Card Gaming. Looney sneaks away to make sure that he's got the late game advantage. Clyde has to shut that down, but he has to heal Gelu at the same time, and while he overextends, they go for damage and take out Gelu, 3-0. Oh, man, and you got to say, Chalky Milkman did play so Waka Waka. Feed versus the fake Zebras. We're all tied up. One and one. Who is going to find themselves on match point? Who is going to get a little bit further into this tournament? Keep in mind, folks, we're doing a brand new thing. You have just entered in the middle of history the longest series that has ever been played in Battle for Azeroth.